When someone is having a stroke, seconds matter. For every uh, minute that a stroke goes untreated, many million brain cells may be damaged, may die. So every minute counts, you know, as we like to say in our, in our uh, clinical world, that time is brain. In 2014, South Carolina had the seventh highest death rate from stroke nationwide. This significantly high rate puts the Palmetto State in the stroke belt, a group of southeastern states troubled with high stroke death rates. We always educate the community and our patients to if they ever experience any stroke signs and symptoms to, to call 911 immediately. And that's typically where the story starts. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? Every day in South Carolina, the air medical crew transports patients across the state. We will go to the side of the highway to a patient's yard if, if EMS calls us there or to the referring facilities. Typically, if a ground ambulance is, is within 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes of a definitive care facility, they'll just opt to bring them in by ground. Where the air medical comes into play is in some of these rural counties or when there's heavy traffic patterns and, and it may take them 30 or 40 minutes to get here, they can activate the aircraft. And what may take 50 minutes by ground may take 10 minutes by air. And again, every minute is neurons. Patients with stroke symptoms are taken to hospitals and clinics nearest them. These hospitals may not have a neurologist on staff, but innovative use of technology is now providing that access. So once the patient comes into the room and we determine through my physical exam that they may be having a stroke, uh, we notify our communications uh, center with what we call a bat or a brain attack. Then the neurologist will call in and kind of do a teleconference, if you will and we'll re-examine the patient together. Telestroke is a method, a mechanism uh, by which we can offer stroke care to patients who may not otherwise have access to it. So usually at the, at the site where the patient is, there is what we call a cart. It's essentially a computer on, on, on wheels and they have the ability to connect this to our end where we have different devices that we can use. We can even use computers, tablets, even smartphones. Hey, uh, this is Dr. Mehta with Neurology over at Christian. Hi, I'm Dr. Davis. When I examine a patient and I'm obviously worried, you know, that they're having a stroke, I say, you know, hey, Ms. Smith, we're going to bring in um, Dr. Mehta. He's our neurologist and he's going to help us examine you and then kind of tell him how it works. You know, he's going to ask you some questions, pretend like he's in the room, okay, and we'll do this together. Our motor strength, so let's uh, see how she's doing on her, on her strength in her arms. Okay, now hold him up. Okay. So I think it is important for, uh, for the ER physician to know the signs and know when to activate all these protocols to get them the specialist care. The neurologist is able to carry out the treatment. The medications that we give these people are very, they can be very dangerous. They can have a lot of side effects. They have to meet certain benchmarks to get these medications. And so it, it does need to be a specialist and an ER physician that are administering these medications and the follow through. Right, right now, this hospital is about 20, 25 minutes away from Richland, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about a stroke, that is a lot. And we didn't have the capability for the neurologist to actually do an exam and see the patient himself, um, which makes it a lot harder to make a judgment call clinically. Now, because the neurologist is able to actually see the patient, we can make better clinical decisions. Follow my finger. I've had patients who, who've, you know, told me that that cart really kind of saved their lives because that what made the difference in their care, being able to see a neurologist, uh, which otherwise they would not have been able to. A stroke victim may need thrombolytic therapy, which is the administration of drugs to restore cerebral blood flow. Telestroke systems enable thrombolytic treatment to be administered in community and rural hospitals and facilitate the appropriate transfer of patients with complex conditions to a comprehensive stroke center. Starting intervention quickly is critical. Access to a neurologist using telehealth technology advances diagnoses allowing treatment to begin before moving the patient. We're gonna find them on a stretcher in a hospital and we're gonna immediately start taking care of them at the bedside. So we're gonna continue their medications, we're gonna continue that mechanical ventilation, and we're actually going to assess them ourselves. And then we're gonna move them over to our stretcher, our monitors, our pumps, and our me mechanical ventilator as well. The door-to-needle time 
is kind of defined as the time that the patient arrives at the hospital to the time that we actually begin the administration of the thrombolytic therapy. The recommendation is to get that within 60 minutes or less, but now studies are actually showing that if we can achieve um, 45 minutes or less, the patients are having a better outcome. So we do collect that data as well, making sure that we are doing those appropriate neurotechs or vital signs that are ordered. And it is this type of collaborative effort that continues to improve access to quality care across the state. You know, one individual cannot take care of a, of a, of a stroke patient. You know, it's very much a team that's required and uh, every member on their team, on the team has their own roles and uh, it is only then that the team can succeed.